here's what you would do to try to test it. Let's say um, at least. Say so you have at least an 80% chance of having a girl in this case, all right? Not exactly 80%, but we'll say at least. It makes things a little bit easier. We'll discover this in a couple sections, but this would be nice for us. Here's what you would do. Okay, try, try to stick with me on this thing. According to your claim, your claim says that if, if that's true, then 80 of these couples should have girls, right? You with me on that? What you would do is you'd start by assuming that the drug doesn't work. You'd say, I'm going to assume the drug doesn't work. That means that 50% should have girls and 50% should have boys. Are you with me on that? The assumption would be... The assumption would be the drug doesn't work. Now you might be wondering why? Why, why do we even have this assumption? Well, here's the, the weird part about statistics. Kind of, the, kind of the sucky part, really, if you want to consider it the sucky part. You can't ever prove anything right in statistics. You can't. It's impossible. You can't be sure enough to prove anything right. You're never 100% sure. But you can be sure enough to prove something wrong. So it's kind of like uh, in court, can, you, can someone ever be found innocent? They never say that, do they? They don't say, we find you innocent. No, what do they say? Not guilty. Not guilty. They say, it's kind of a, a pessimistic way to look at it, isn't it? It says, well, either we, we have enough evidence to convict you or we don't. You might have done it in both cases, but here we had it. I don't, I'm not saying you're innocent. OJ did it. He did it. <laughs> but he was found not guilty, wasn't he? Right? So it's either you have enough evidence to prove someone wrong, guilty, or you don't, not guilty. You can't ever prove someone right, innocent. You can't do it. In statistics, you can't prove anything right. So if you want to prove a statement true, you have to state the opposite of it and then prove that statement wrong. Do you see the idea? You can't ever prove a statement true. So you state the opposite of it and try to prove that statement wrong. That inherently proves your original statement true. It's a weird way of looking at it, I understand that. But know that statistics can't prove something right, it can only uh, prove statements incorrect. That's all it can do. So we're going to assume the drug doesn't work. If the dr drug doesn't work, then that would mean 50% girls and 50% boys. Remember, this is our assumption. We're going to assume the drug doesn't work. Let me give you two cases. Let's say this happened. Let's say they tested these 100 couples. You ready for this? You ready? I hope, I hope you're with me on this. You understand the idea that the doesn't work thing, right? How that we can only prove statements wrong. We can't prove statements right. Just check out how this would work. We, now we're, we're not actually into the math yet. We're, we're all in the theory still. Let's say that these couples, 52 of them, had girls. Out of the hundred, 52 of them had girls. The question is, is this number, this remember this is out of a hundred, right? 52 out of a hundred had girls. Is this 52 <coughs> different enough from this 50% to make this statement wrong? If I say 50-50, it's if I say 50, 50, but we have 100 couples, and I say, you, you know inherently that it's 50% girls, 50% boys, right? Without taking any drugs, there's a 50-50 chance you're going to get a girl or a boy. Yes? And I say, okay, 52 of you had, had girls out of 100. Is that usual or unusual? It would be pretty normal, wouldn't it? Is it different enough from this to prove that statement wrong? No. This would say, our statement, our assumption was the drug doesn't work. This doesn't prove that statement right, but it doesn't falsify that statement either. So we, we'd say, yeah, the drug probably doesn't work. We can't prove it. But only 52 of them had girls. I mean, that, that's not good enough to prove that statement wrong. Are you with me on that? Now check this example out. Let's say that 97 out of 100 had girls. <coughs> Ninety-seven out of one hundred had girls. Is ninety-seven out of a hundred way different than fifty out of a hundred? 
it's pretty significantly different, isn't it? If I said to you, what's the chances, think about this, what's the chances that I didn't give anybody drugs or that the drug doesn't work and 97 out of 100 of them had girls? Is that rare? That's really, really rare. <coughs> this is way different than that one. This, this probability of this happening, assuming the drug doesn't work, is really rare. So what's it say about, say about that statement? If the probability of this happening is rare, considering this statement, then this statement is probably false. So the, the statement, the drug doesn't work, is probably wrong. What's it say about the drug? It works. That's how you prove a statement true. You assume like the opposite of it. You assume, some, you assume some statement that you can prove true or false, and then you try to do that. Sometimes, you're not going to get enough evidence. Only 52 out of 100 had girls. Does that prove that one wrong? No. Doesn't say anything. This would do nothing for you. But this one, that's a rare thing. That's a rare thing considering your statement. If the drug didn't work, this wouldn't happen. Does that make sense to you? That wouldn't happen in real life. If you, just, if you compared the 100 people with, with the drugs to the 100 people without the drugs, that's not going to happen in people without the drugs. It's going to be really close to, it's going to be like that. Okay? So this, 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 uh, this action, this occurrence is very rare. That says your assumption's probably wrong. If your assumption's wrong, the drug doesn't work. If that's wrong, then the drug does work, and that proves that claim, that at least it'll give you 80% chance of having a claim. How many people understood the idea of this hypothesis test? Good. Now that's an overall rundown. What we're really doing is, is comparing the probability of things occurring. If the probability is rare enough, the assumption is probably wrong. So we are still talking about the introduction to hypothesis testing. And if you remember from the last time we did this, what we're trying to do is to prove a claim incorrect or prove, prove a claim correct by stating that some claim and proving it wrong, thereby proving our original claim correct. It's kind of a backwards way of doing things. I, I made the analogy that this is like when you're in court. You can't ever prove someone innocent, right? You can't guarantee they didn't do it. All you can do is prove them guilty or not guilty. Either you have enough evidence to condemn them or you don't have enough evidence to condemn them. We are either going to have enough evidence to condemn our claim or not have enough evidence to condemn our claim and therefore can't reject it. We're either going to reject or fail to reject our claim. We're never going to be accepting. We're never going to be accepting. Um, I, I say. I say claim. We're, this this next part I'm going to tell you about. This next part I'm going to tell you about is called the hypothesis. With hypothesis testing, you actually have two hypotheses. We're going to be having something called a null hypothesis. the null hypothesis, and the alternative hypothesis. We'll talk about that in just a second. But let me give you kind of the characteristics of the null hypothesis. When we talk about the null hypothesis, and I'll, I'll put it up here too, versus the alternative. Hypothesis. When we talk about the null, we'll do that first here, null hypothesis. We're going to denote that with a special symbol. This seems kind of appropriate for the, for the season. It is H sub 0. Looks like ho. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Not the other type of ho, all right? <laughs> Sick people. All right. Yeah, it's, it's H sub 0. It's, we, don't say, we don't say ho. Uh, we, you, some, some classes do. They say ho and ha. Because the, the, the yeah, it's funny. Ho for the, the null, and then alternative has a little a, right? So ho, ho, ha, ha. Right? That's, that's how. The, we're going to do h sub 0 and h sub 1, the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. That just seems a little bit less funny and more, more serious, so we can have uh, serious statistics students. But th this is how you write it. It's denoted h sub 0. It stands for the null hypothesis. That's, that's it. What this does, this is a, a unique idea. This is always going to be a statement that reflects some population parameter is equal to a value. This is a statement of equality. So when you talk about the null hypothesis, you must absolutely have an equal statement in there. Do you understand? The null hypothesis will have an equal sign. It's a statement of equality. It says the population proportion is equal to some value. 
or the population mean, or the population standard deviation. It's some parameter. I know I'll make it easy. It states that the population parameter Remember that a population parameter, in our case, we can talk about the mean or the proportion. Ladies and gentlemen, what symbol do you use for the population mean? Mu. So we're talking about mu's here. How about for the population proportion? P. With a hat or not? No hat. That's, that's population. So we're talking about mu's and p's. That's, that's what we're talking about as far as the mole, the, the null. We're going to have these things equal to some value. So it states that the population parameter, either mean or proportion, is equal, equal to some value. Let me give you an example. Just a just simple example here. Here's how your null hypothesis will look when you're doing this. First example, you could, you'll have a sub 0 with a colon there. You'll have some statement, like let's say we're talking about the mean, we'd have mu. It's just going to say, let's suppose that the mu is equal to 5. That could be a null hypothesis. Notice how we have some population parameter. It's, it's the mean this time. It's equal to some number. So that equality that has to be there, that's always going to happen for the null hypothesis. If you're talking about per, uh, the proportion, you would have p equals like, I don't know, 0.5. Remember, proportions have to be decimals, and means don't have to be decimals less than 1. So proportion, you're going to have to be between 0 and 1, means it, that, that, uh, that necess necessity isn't there. You okay with this so far? So we just have these things called null hypotheses. We know that it's going to have some parameter mu or p, and it's going to be equal to some number. Now, this is, this is always how we do a hypothesis test. This is going to be a little bit of a, a, a recall for you. This is how we do it. How to test hypothesis. What you're going to do here, this is the interesting part of hypothesis testing. You are going to assume, did you remember doing the assumptions? We said we're going to assume this is true. If we come up with evidence that's not true, we're going to reject it. If we don't come up with evidence, well, we can't, we can't assume it's wrong. Here's what you do. You assume that this right here is true. You assume that the null hypothesis is always true. And then you work to reach a conclusion. So how you do a hypothesis test, you begin by assuming the null hypothesis, h sub 0, is 